Welcome to Financial Focus, brought to you by Gulf Coast Financial Services founder and CEO, John Kirkendall. John and his team of financial, legal, and tax professionals have provided North Florida savers and investors sound, comprehensive financial guidance for over 25 years, helping you to achieve important life and planning goals. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more Financial Focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. And welcome into the program. This is Financial Focus, North Central Florida's resource where a common sense approach to planning is the team from Gulf Coast Financial Services, named best of the best in financial services by the Lake City Reporter, six years running founder and CEO John Kirkendall with us as always talking about a topic that's on everybody's mind these days John taxes <laughs> oh yeah you know the number one expense in retirement Peter taxes we're just uh, I'm so excited today to talk about them and bring them forefront to people's mind because uh, a lot of people put off their taxes D -d 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 delay and defer is sort of the name yeah. of the game it's how we've been taught to handle taxes john but yeah is it the right approach i mean for savers and investors who began their retirement accounts maybe back in the mid 80s taxes have come down but we we aren't looking back we're looking forward when we're planning and and will taxes continue to go down or could they reverse direction on us well, I think, you know, right now we're at the mercy of the government and it's whatever the government needs. And the way that the government's spending, Peter, I don't see any way that taxes are going to be cheaper in the future than they are right now. And, and you know, that's really something that we all did. I mean, you know, back when I first started, we always said defer now because when you retire, you'll be in a lower tax bracket. But that's not, ne that's not necessarily true because for one thing, it's taking more to live in retirement. And so our income is higher because we're having to find ways to bring in more money. So we're either going back to work or we're drawing more out of our retirement accounts, or we've got some way that we, we've trying to make as much as we can. So I think that taxes are not going to be lower. Uh, it's, uh, you know, kind of something that was a myth that we taught that's not going to be true. And taxes fall more on our own individual shoulders in retirement as well. It's not like getting the paycheck where taxes are, are sort of already taken care of for us. Well, you know, when we, when we um, get that paycheck and the taxes come out, we don't think too much about it because we've got that paycheck coming in every week. But when we're the paycheck, taxes become more important. And we probably should have done a lot better job of planning our taxes all along, Peter. We should have started when we were younger, understanding how taxes work. Uh, and that's the big thing, education. The majority of the people don't have a clue as to how income taxes really work. Do you find that as a particular pain point for retirees, even if they're paying about the same amount in taxes, the fact that they actually have to write a check for it or, or elect to have that large a percentage deducted from every payment they receive that they're like, wow, I didn't, didn't really realize I would be paying this much in taxes. Well, I think that's true, Peter. I mean, you know, a lot of people thought that when we retired, that it was going to be easy street, that we had saved up this money. We had our social security check um, and we were going to be able to live the life that we wanted after retirement, the thing was, it would be the same life. We just wouldn't have to go to work. Yeah, yeah. But what we're finding is, is that that's not true. We don't get to do as many things. We can't spend as much money because we haven't planned properly. Um, and, you know, I was looking at something the other day and 21% of married people and 45% of unmarried people rely on social security for 90% of their income. Wow. wow. And I don't know about you, but my social, well, you don't, you're not getting it, but my social security <laughs> <for a> while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> isn't that big. Well, it wasn't, and, it wasn't ever intended to cover all of regular living expenses. It was, it was intended as I believe originally to keep people just above the, the poverty, poverty level. Right, John? Well, that's right, because when it started, when people retired and couldn't work, they didn't have any money coming in. They hadn't saved up. It didn't take as much back then. So the way that Social Security was worked up was it would be give you a, a lifetime income, kind of like a pension, and that would take care of you and keep you above poverty. But it wasn't supposed to give you 
trips to the Bahamas or, you know, buy new clothes all the time are the things that we still want in retirement. Right. More and more. That's what we plan on trying to do in retirement. And and so we really need to take a look at uh, what that tax bill is going to be, how it's going to be handled, how to maximize available sources of lifetime income, but keep as much of our nest egg working for us as, as possible. And so this is the time of year where I think that that is on people's minds, John, Mm -hmm. but people tend to be historical in nature and and look back at last year, file the documents, prepare the documents, but not really forward looking and planning for the future on how to control and minimize that tax liability. That's right. I mean, you know, we, we, we get all the documents together, we go down, we have somebody prepare our taxes. And what we're doing is, is we're looking at last year's taxes, last year's income, but we're not really planning for next year or how can I save more money? Uh, how can I do a better job of my taxes in the coming year? And unfortunately, you know, a lot of people, it uh, a taxes a, a hit a lot of income because of the taxes creates a ripple effect across everything. Part B, Medicare, Social Security, how much of your Social Security is taxed? I, uh, was listening to a paper this morning and we had a individual that got 200 and I think it was 75,000 in the lottery. Well, they took a $236,000 lump sum before taxes. Now, if they are retired, I mean, if they're on Medicare and social security, that just created a whole bunch of problems for them that tax wise, they weren't ready for. Because, you know, Social Security is 85% of your Social Security can be taxed up to. And also, you can be paying over $500 a month for your Medicare Part B if you're not careful. And it, that is means tested based on means. your other income of which yes. tax deferred accounts. Tax deferral in your working <laughs> career equates to tax payments in retirement. And I think that's that's where we're a little short-sighted and the oversight in planning is it's not just the payment on those dollars, but the growth to those dollars means more taxes. And then also can affect your social security and Medicare. It's a, it's a double yeah. whammy. It's a triple whammy. It's a triple whammy. But you know what we've been taught is we've been taught to, to save taxes on the seed. And then we end up paying taxes on the seed and the harvest. And so we end up paying a lot more in taxes if we hadn't deferred than we would if we did defer. And back, you know, really over a period of time, while you're drawing that, that paycheck, it's really not that big a deal to pay more taxes and, and defer into a Roth or some other means to, to really have some tax-free income at retirement. And we, we got to remember that uh, the rules on those tax deferred accounts can change. And John, even, even if tax laws, tax rates, tax brackets stay the same, if growth is your goal for your investment accounts or your retirement accounts, then your goal is aligned with Uncle Sam. He wants your account to grow too because they'll harvest more tax dollars in the future. But you and I, we've talked, I, I think we both agree that taxes probably aren't going just to stay the same into the future. We think that they're probably there's a likelihood of them going up. Well, I think that they'll go up. I think that there'll be ways just like this new secure act, which requires that after you pass it after the spouse, the next generation has 10 years to take that deferred money out and pay taxes on the, all of it. So it's not, you know, they can change the rules on us anytime they want to. We know that, they can change the amount we're getting. They can change how much is subject to ta- to uh, the Social Security subject to taxes. They can do all kinds of things. So what we've done is, without knowing it, we've made the government a, a, a partner in our business, and we've given them fifty one percent because they control the rules. Not, and not, so, not of not of the actual money. They don't get to keep no. more than half of our money. But, but, but they are the ones that are the managing partner about all the rules. They, they oh, control yeah, they, that business. They can change their rules anytime they want to, and they do, Peter. And, and you're going to see more in the future. This year, we're going to have more, uh, more uh, taxes come out. Supposedly, it's going to be on the, uh, you know, the higher earners. But there also has been some things that have been talked about that are, it's going to affect everybody. And so 
why we did this, I don't know, but it's wrong. We should never have deferred as much as we have. And when I see somebody come in and a hundred percent of their money is deferred and they, and they, all their savings, they have very little cash, no Ross, no life insurance, but they have this huge deferred account. And they think they've done such a wonderful job, but then we start telling them how much taxes they've got to pay and how all this is going to work out. It's, it's amazing to me. Uh, that uh, it took, took us this long to wake up. Well, again, we need to, I guess, then, John, look for opportunities and strategies to try to control that tax bill in the future. And I know that's a big area that you help people to identify and then execute on is uh, you've got your sister company there, Gulf Coast Tax Advantage, looking at both yes. the financial side of things and the tax side of things. <laughs> Being proactive in the forward-looking tax planning is, is a lot about identifying the right strategies today, right? That's right, Peter. And what we want to do with our financial focus lot income plan is we want to make sure that we look at the taxes. And then what we like to do is before they make a major change in their lifestyle or in how they're withdrawing their money, we want to run it by the uh, we want to run it through the software and see how it's going to affect us. I always think back to when the, the lady came in last year and said, I want to take $10,000 out of my account to buy some shrubs for the yard. Seems like a nice thing. And when we ran her through the tax software, we explained to her that she could do that, but it was gonna cost her 40% on that additional 10,000. So she was really paying 4,000 in taxes to get 10,000 out of her account. Wow, wouldn't buy nearly as many shrubs. No. <laughs> we gotta take more money out and then we create more taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, vicious cycle, they say. Yeah, but I mean, that's the way this thing works because it's based upon, you know, each dollar is taxed at a different rate. And so as you go up the scale, the more dollars you have, the more dollars you have in income, the higher taxes you are. And what we want to do is we want to stay down so that we don't hit the next level and then all those dollars are taxed for, uh, at a higher rate. And I, and I like the fact that you actually came up with a solution for this young lady that helped to control and minimize those taxes. Well, that's right. All we had to do was wait 30 days to put the, the uh, shrubs in and she was in the next year tax bracket and we started all over again. It's like the lady that wanted to buy a car for her granddaughter and she went ahead and did it without asking us. And what it did was it bumped her social security part B up to the next level. She called me, she couldn't understand it. She wanted to sue the government for charging her more. But then I explained to her what she had done. So now every year we look at her and figure out where she is and tell her how much more she can take out. And then if she needs more, we do it in a couple of months because usually we're in October, November. Well, good that you can be there as, as the resource to provide that kind of information for your clients there at Gulf Coast Financial Services. Uh, maybe what are some of the strategic opportunities that you look to to help savers and investors identify that are available right now, but you know what they say about opportunities? They, they, they tend to go away if we don't act on them. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that we're looking at is life insurance. Life insurance is not like it used to be, and it certainly is a way that we can uh, get some tax-free income if we build up enough cash value, but also it will pass to the heirs tax-free. So that's a way that we can help pay for this inheritance tax that they're going to have on the amount of money over 10 years that they have to pull out. So that's one way we try to do that. Uh, qualified charitable contributions, that's one thing we do with our clients is instead of giving after-tax money, let's give money out of their deferred accounts uh, directly to the charity, and then we don't have to worry about that that counting uh, for income tax. And it also counts for the minimum distribution that we have to do every year now. Uh, last year, we didn't have to do the required minimum distributions, but this year it looks like unless something changes, we will. And so that's going to be back on the table again for a lot of our retirees. Uh, doubling up, making two years of contributions, uh, spousal contribution. A lot of spouses who work at home and live at home take care of the kids, the house, or their company doesn't have a retirement. We can do spousals, and so we can get that. Roth IRAs are some, certainly something we're working with because Roth IRAs and Roth conversions is something I think that uh, is is a hot button right now, especially the conversions because if we are in a lower tax bracket now 
we can move that money into a Roth, pay the taxes now and have it grow tax free so that we don't pay taxes on the harvest. Those are just some of the things that we're doing, uh, talking to clients about and working with. And I think it works great. Well, bottom line, I think taxes for most of us, we feel like it's it's a pain, a little thorn in our <laughs> side. Uh, paying taxes means you made money. So it's been also called a good problem to have, but uh, I still hear the word problem in, in that <laughs> statement. So, uh, however, not planning for how to control taxes in the future probably could make that pain much more significant. And right now we've got a window of opportunity where we know what tax rates are today. We are yep. in a historically low tax environment. And John, uh, there at Gulf Coast Financial Services, you're helping your clients take advantage of that opportunity. Well, that's right, Peter. And what we want to do is we want to start early. So we're, you know, we want to work the first of the year instead of the later in the year. So if there are some things that we can do, we can do them now and throughout the year uh, and be proactive rather than reactive. Uh, taxes are something we have to be proactive with. We cannot just wait and then all of a sudden say, gee whiz, I wish I had figured out a way to save money on my taxes. You're not going to do that. Um, and luckily, through our tax practice and also through the tax software we have, we found some ways that we can help people. And uh, it's really exciting. It's also something that we love to do. So we'd love to work with you on a financial focus income plan. Well, I also always like pointing this out. The larger your tax deferred retirement balance is, the more costly ignoring this opportunity will be for you. And, and not just proportionally, we have a progressive tax system. So the higher the balance, the more uh, income you pull from it, the higher percentage you will pay in taxes. So uh, for those of you that have done a good job of saving and investing and accumulating a, a good balance in those tax deferred retirement accounts, now is absolutely the moment in time you need to really look at strategizing. The name of the game to this point has been investment management, growing those accounts. Moving forward, it, it might just uh, transition and be tax management. Let's keep as much of, uh, as possible of what we have. Yeah. I tell you, as much as we keep as much as we can, we're going to we'll have a better lifestyle. And also, you know, it won't hit us as hard at the end of the year when we find out that we have to put more in. So uh, I think it's better to do it all along. And, and get it set up so that you know what you're doing and have a plan in place. And that income plan does that. That's what it's for. Well, if you would like to get that financial focus plan in your hands, snapshot of where you are, a discussion of and, and documentation of your goals mm -hmm. into the future, and then specific steps, recommendations on, on how you can work to achieve them, executable action items. And by the way, not financial jargon. This is simple, easy to understand language, uh, an explanation of, of how to work the plan to achieve your goals. Pick up the phone, give a call. John Kirkendall, his team there at Gulf Coast Financial Services, Gulf Coast Tax Advantage. They'll work hard to help your money work hard for you. Pick up the phone, give them a call and request that financial focus plan. No cost, no obligation. 386-755-9018. That's 386-755-9018. Always one big offer on the program. And that is for you to get that plan in place or to check up on your current plan. John, I know you spend a lot of time reviewing plans that people had previously had and maybe spotting and identifying areas that can be improved. Maybe just giving them a pat on the back. Well, that's right, Peter. And we also work with people on their taxes so that we can help them. Um, but a lot of times we like to review just to make sure that what they're doing is right. Um, and, you know, see if we can help them some way. And usually we can. Uh, financial focus, that income plan is something that we really love. We really love doing it. Pick up the phone, give them a call. 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. John, always a pleasure. We appreciate you being here uh, to help Thank us you, focused on our finances. Talk to you next Thank time. you, Peter. Yeah, man. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more financial focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. The information presented on this program is provided for informational purposes only, without warranty of accuracy, completeness, or suitability for a particular purpose. This program is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. This information is general in nature and not specific enough to be construed as advice. You should not make any decision based on the information presented on this program without independent consultation with an appropriately licensed professional or confident advisor. Investment in securities or the market involves a potential risk for loss of principal. Trading, therefore, may not be suitable for all listeners. Annuity guarantees are based only on the financial strength and 
claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the product's features and costs. Early withdrawals may subject the owner to penalties, fees, or taxes. John Kirkendall is registered with and securities are offered through Kovac Securities, Inc., member FINRA SIPC, found online at www.kovacsecurities.com. Advisory services are offered through Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor in Florida. Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc. is not affiliated with Kovac Securities, Inc. or Kovac Advisors, Inc. Past performance is not indicative of future results. All investing involves risk. Investment decisions should be based on your own goals, time horizon, and tolerance for risk. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable laws, the content may no longer be reflective of current opinions or positions.